Hi guys, it's Jason from Crop King, and today I'm going to show you how to mix dry nutrients in your NFT desktop system. So there's a few things we're going to want before we get started. First of all, make sure you have your nutrients. So I do have my HydroGrow Leafy. You can see that I've labeled it as three quarters of a teaspoon. That's how much I'm going to need to do a batch. I like to label it with a black Sharpie because it does make it easier if I'm working with students to just tell them to make sure you put in exactly three quarters of a teaspoon into the solution. And that way, if it's on the bag, they're not going to get confused. The second nutrient you want to make sure that you have is your calcium nitrate. And again, I've marked the bag this time with one half of a teaspoon. You're going to want source water. So wherever that's coming from, your tap, your faucet, whatever. A way of measuring your nutrients. So I'd recommend a one quarter teaspoon measuring spoon. That black Sharpie can come in helpful. Something to mix with. And then ideally something that you can measure EC and pH with. Now we recommend the Blue Lab Combo Meter because it's the industry standard when it comes to measuring nutrients and pH. So you're going to get very, very accurate results with this. Uh, but we do understand that a $250 price tag can be tough for some teachers. So we trialed a few on Amazon just to see if there's any we loved. There weren't. Uh, most of the ones that we tried, we just didn't find to be very successful at giving us an accurate reading. So the Blue Lab is going to be the gold standard for you, but there are some on, on Amazon that can help you get at least an idea of where your pH and EC might be at. So we're going to begin the process with our water. So we take our source water here, we want to measure it with our Blue Lab meter, and we want to see what our EC is, and we want to record that information. Once we know what that information is, then we can start adding our dry ingredients. So I'm going to take three quarters of a teaspoon of HydroGrow Leafy and half a teaspoon of calcium nitrate and add it to my gallon jug. Once those dry ingredients are in there, the gallon of water would go into the gallon jug, cap off and give that a really good shake. Now using warm to hot water is gonna work best because nutrients dissolve much easier with warm water. So you can consider using warmer water as opposed to cold tap water. Once that's been shaken up, you can kind of put that aside. I'm going to show you another method to mix the nutrients directly in the reservoir. And in that case, you won't need the gallon jug. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the way we're going to begin is with our hydro grow leafy. We're going to take our one quarter teaspoon measuring spoon that we have on hand here. And I want to put three flat scoops. So make sure they're not rounded. Otherwise, you're getting more than a quarter of a teaspoon. So flat. Go ahead and add those three scoops, which is going to give you three quarters of a teaspoon of HydroGrow Leafy. And you can put them directly into the reservoir, just like that. Seal up your bag so that thing doesn't get spilled. And then you move on to your calcium nitrate. And if you recall, we were going to put a half a teaspoon of this in. So two flat scoops at one quarter of a teaspoon is going to give us half a teaspoon. And now our dry ingredients have been put into the reservoir. When that's in, we're now ready to add our first gallon of water. So he'll go ahead and grab your source water, pour that into your reservoir. And the idea here is really to dissolve the nutrients. So ideally with that warm water or hot water, um, things are going to dissolve a little bit better. So what you're trying to achieve is no visible nutrients in the reservoir when you're finished. So I like to use some sort of a stirring stick, just anything you find around that can be used to stir and give that a good mix up. If the water's warm enough, you should see this start to, to dissolve pretty quickly. Once you don't see any solid ingredients anymore in the bottom of your reservoir, you're probably ready to move on at that point in time. I'm just going to give it a nice good stir here. Um, the more dissolved it's going to be, the more accurate the reading will be when you take your EC reading here in just a minute. I'm going to set that aside. Now, if I was doing the jug method, this would be the time where I would pour my mixed jug into my empty reservoir. Now, of course, we've already added water and nutrients, so we're not going to do it again. But if it were empty, you would take your mixed jug, pour that in. And then for either process, whether you do the reservoir or the jug, you're going to add another half gallon of water to top off the system. So once that water's been put into the reservoir, one more really good stir. Again, just to make sure everything's kind of co-mingled together there. We don't have any dry nutrients sitting in the bottom of our reservoir anymore. And now we're ready to take another EC reading. And what we're shooting for here is an EC of somewhere between a 1.4 and a 1.8. Now, if you're a little bit high, you're on the high end of 1.8, you can add water to dissolve, or to, I'm sorry, to dilute the, the solution a little bit and bring the EC down. If you're low, however, you can always mix up another jug of one gallon of water, 
three quarters hydrogrow leafy and one half of calcium nitrate and make another concentrate and add a little bit of that. So maybe start with a, a small portion at a time, maybe a quarter of a cup or less and see what that does to affect your EC. Once you're comfortable with your EC, let's say you get it between that 1.4 and that 1.8, you're ready to check your pH. Now we want our pH to be somewhere in the neighborhood of a 5.5 to a 6.5. So that means we want it slightly acidic. If you find that your pH is high, which oftentimes people will, you need to add pH down to that, which we have available in the links below, that will bring the pH back to a level that the plants are most happy at. So again, that's a 5.5 to a 6.5. Now, if you've added hot water or warm water, remember you want that to come back down to a room temperature because that hot water can actually stress your plants. So you don't wanna put your plants above a reservoir full of hot water. So be cautious about that. When you're ready and everything's dissolved, the water temperatures come down, you can go ahead and put on your lid, you put on your two NFT channels, insert your two pieces of spaghetti tube, install your plants, put your light over the top, and you're ready to rock and roll. You're ready to start growing. So if you have any more questions, if this didn't answer any of the questions that you still have, please feel free to reach out to us at cropking.com. Give us a phone call. You can shoot us an email. We have a team on staff that's always ready to answer any questions that you have, and we look forward to working with you and happy growing.